Up first, I have a couple of packages that have the same description and yep, optocoupler is what it looks like I'm seeing. Oh, this one is just an eight pin dip, but these are the four pin more familiar looking ones. 817. Yeah, I think that's PC 817, is it? It's been a while since I ordered these, but I put them in a few other previous projects where I was controlling relays and things like that. So I'm just restocking. But these, 6N138, those have more of a Darlington transistor setup inside. So there's a pin here to access the base of the final output stage transistor. I've seen these used in a lot of designs for MIDI optocoupler interfaces. So I just decided to make sure I have enough options here to experiment with, get something working with MIDI soon. Now this one, I think I ordered a long time ago. Looks like transistors. And I double checked the shipping address on there. That's a previous place and I've been here two years. So I ordered these a while ago. And these are 2N2222 NPN general purpose transistors. Looks like maybe a hundred. I have various bundles of transistors all over the place in part trays. And I also have this kit of transistors, which includes the 2N2222. But it's been a while since I restocked, apparently more than a couple of years. So I'm trying to get a lot more sorted out lately. I just bought a bunch of toolboxes, for example, so I can get things all cleared up. A lot of things are encroaching around the workbench. So while I get sorted out, I want to just also pay attention to what needs restocking. And here is a couple of modules that I think think are similar. Max 98357 I2S mono amplifier. Yeah. So that allows using I2S digital audio, which I've done with Teensy and a little bit with ESP32. And this has a power amp on it. So the output speaker can be four to eight ohms and I guess with four ohms, you can get three watts. You can power it from 2.5 to 5.5 volts. So you send in digital audio with the I2S bus, power it, and then there's a screw terminal output for a speaker directly. So I thought that would be interesting to make a little project. And this other one should be a different I2S module. Yeah, I think this is a PCM5102. So this one does have line level outputs and it has a line out 3.5 millimeter jack. So this one will let us hook up to the I2S digital audio bus on a module, but we can connect it to something other than directly driving a speaker. So depending what projects we're doing, we may want one or the other as an option. Here's another one I ordered long ago now. Oh, there's a couple of things. Yeah, they're the same. It looks like the familiar part number here for a relay, G6K2FY, five volt DC. So these are little surface mount relays. Just over a year ago, I made this relay matrix board where you can have an input signal and route it to various outputs. So let's say you wanted five different test sine waves coming in and you wanted them all to route to one channel of an oscilloscope, one after the next, so you can just look at them maybe as test signals, things like this. But I was wondering if I could make the relays even smaller and make the board either smaller or have more channels on it. So I think that's what I bought these relays for. I'm gonna have to revisit this and see how these in the specs compare to this and maybe do some more experimenting because I want to get back to this. This project never got completed, so maybe later this year. And then there's this package, which feels lightweight for the size of this box. 
Oh, yes. High power LED. This is a UVC LED. One watt can run five to seven volts. So the reason I want this UVC LED, I wonder if I can use it to erase EEPROMs because I've started working with these a little bit lately and I cannot find my old UV eraser that had one of those bulbs in it. So I'm going to try this. It says Cree. I don't know if it really is. So it's got a plus and minus terminal. It's just an LED as far as I know. I have to make sure I current limit and it looks like we have a metal backing on there for heat sinking. I don't know if it's enough if we keep this thing on, but I'm gonna make some connections here and see what happens. I have a couple of these alligator clips with just tinned wire ends. I don't know where this came from, but I looked inside here and it is soldered on here. It's not just crimped. And I measured the resistance. It's basically a good short circuit. So this should be good for power delivery to the LED. And looking at the EEPROM erase properties in the data sheets, it says it's good to have maybe around just over 250 nanometers of UVC. So this is close to that and I hope it works. So now I don't really have a proper LED driver. So I'm just going to put this on a bench power supply. I'm going to put a 10 ohm power resistor in series here so that if I know this thing maybe wants a nominal six or so volts across it, the listing said also 150 milliamps would be the forward current. So I'm just going to turn up the power supply until I get somewhere around that voltage and that current and the resistor may help me out a bit regulating this all and make sure I don't go beyond the forward voltage of this part and we'll see what happens. And I don't have one of those UV test cards. I've ordered some. So I've got everything set up here with my series resistor. The power supply is waiting for me to increase the current limit. And I've got this partition here. I cannot see on the other side, but looking in the camera, there's the LED. So I can look at the camera and see if anything's happening. If I make it darker in the room, it might help. So I'll turn up the voltage. Yep. Looking in the camera, I see that doing something. It's only 90 milliamps. There's about 130 to 140. So the LED is lighting up. I'll turn it off. And now I have the TL8663 G Universal Programmer, and I found a 40 pin PIC 16C65B chip I was using maybe in the early 2000s. So it's got an EEPROM window. And if I look at the contents, if I read the chip, which I've already done, it does have contents in there. It looks like just these first couple of lines have some sort of code and the rest maybe is blank. So I'm going to try to put that UV LED up on this window and see if I can erase this. Now I'm going to turn on the power supply. After a minute and a half, I just refreshed it. I saw something changing up here. Now it's been two minutes, so I'm looking for a change in this ASCII area. It's easier to see than all these hex numbers. So I'm going to read again. I think I saw a change again. So I think it's working. It's doing something. And while that's going on, I'll just scroll down here. So the power supply is at 7.7 .7 volts and 150 milliamps. So that's 1.15 watts. So that 7.7 .7 volts includes a drop across the resistor and the rest would be the forward voltage that the LED wants. So I threw that floppy on top of it just as an extra measure, but the UV LED is placed directly as best as I could center it on the EEPROM window. Then I have electrical tape. Then I put this floppy. 
So let's try and zoom in on this again. So it's been three minutes and 45 seconds. I'll read it again. Well, it changed again. I don't know <laughs> if it's on its way to erasing. It must be. Now it's been five minutes, so I'll read the chip again. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of three FFFs showing up here. It's not exactly blank, but it is getting there. So I think that's the trick. I had tried this a couple of times, but um, the LED was too far away from the EEPROM window. I even tried putting a lens on it, but that didn't do anything. It needed to be really on top of the chip. So at this point, I'm just going to keep refreshing until this looks clear. Actually, it's getting close. So I'm going to, now that I can't really directly tell, I'm going to get out of the read and go to blank check. And that should tell me if it actually is done. So it's currently not blank. Six minutes, 45 seconds, device is blank. It works. So if I now go back down here, first things First, I got to turn off the LED, wait for the power supply to be off. Okay, now I'll dismantle this. So it's all taped on. And the LED is not too hot, so that little uh, heat sink is doing okay right here, this metal. So I just had it placed directly trying to center it on the window. And that's when it finally started working better. It didn't work when I had it elevated a bit. So this is my new EEPROM eraser in lieu of having a proper one. Well, this was a more fun experimental mailbag. I wish I knew where my other UV eraser went, but at least I have something now that still works. And we've got some stuff to experiment with. These little relays, I want to see if I can get them to miniaturize this board. Got some other parts, I2S stuff, optocouplers for upcoming MIDI projects, and restocking transistors. Thanks to Patreon and channel supporters for making this possible.